Well, I'm not sure I'm quite welcome in the Tiafimo Lopez household at Christmas. I hope I are. We were getting on so well. I would like to share mince pies and maybe a glass of milk or a, a fine scotch with Mr. Lopez Senior. They will be back. They give us one of the fights of the year at Madison Square Garden. Probably time to move to 140 pounds and I've got just the guy for you. Montana Too Pretty Love. Our recent signing from Cleveland just lit up the MGM brand one week after Tiafimo Lopez against Cambosas. So if you want to be welcomed into 140 pounds, Montana's waiting for you, Tio. What's Lopez. good, YouTube? It's KB with Just Do Boxing back with another video. And as y'all can see, I wanted to get my thoughts on the clip that I put in the beginning of the video of Eddie Hearn saying Montana Love will welcome Tiafimo Lopez to 140. I wanted to get my thoughts on the potential matchup between the two. And, you know, Tiafimo just coming off of, you know, a big split decision loss over George Cambosis Jr. And uh, Montana Love, on the other hand, still undefeated, 17-0-1, 9 KOs, 26 years old, 5'8", with a 68 and a half inch reach. South Pole fighting out of Cleveland, Ohio. Interesting that they had the same height and reach, you know, and it got around the same number of fights. Montana got 18 fights, you know, Tiafimo got 17. With 12 knockouts, he's 24 years old, just turned 24. Montana, two years older, 26. Coming off a great TKO performance over 29 and one Carlos Diaz in the third round. Back in December 4th at the MGM Grand. Fight took place at 140, but for some odd reason, Love came in three over three pounds overweight. You know, something to keep an eye on. Something I'm not gonna make too big a deal out of because it's his first time. So we'll keep a close eye on him. The fight before that. It took place, he looked great also on the undercard of Jake Paul, Tyron Woodley first fight back in August the 29th of 2021, where he recorded a seventh round stoppage over then 20 and one, 20 and one, I, no, excuse me, 20 and two, Ivan the Beast Baranchik, where he landed a perfect left hook, left uppercut that landed Baranchik on the canvas. And it caused his corner to stop the fight before the beginning of the eighth round before he could receive any more punishment. You know, Love had a couple rocky little rough moments where he had to, you know, overcome, you know, some, the pressure of Baranchek, but ultimately he was able to do so. And he got Baranchek up out of there with that left uppercut that, that, that sent him into another world. And as far as Montana, he looked sharp, you know, quick, explosive, his last two fights. You know, he's not known for being a puncher, but he's made the, the move. Since he's made the move from 135 to 140, look a lot stronger, sharper. He looks faster. He just looks healthier at the weight. He's filled out at the weight as well. And he just looks good at 140. And I think I think that's that's that weight class suits him better. He just he just looks naturally stronger. See, Fimo, on the other hand, he's coming off his first loss as a professional against the undefeated 20-0 newly crowned unified lightweight champion George Cambosis Jr. Not gonna call him undisputed because we all know that Devin Haney got the WBC belt at lightweight, so that's that's that. But uh, George Cambosis, you know, beat Teal back in November 27th of last year, where, you know, where he dropped Teal in the first round. Tio was badly cut and outboxed in the fight that turned out to be his first professional loss and his worst performance of his career. I mean, he just didn't look good to me from the opening bell. He was overly aggressive and he seemed to have no game plan other than to tr really try to knock Cambosis out in the first round. And we all see how that played out and definitely backfired. I think he showed a lack of focus and preparation, you know, taking that approach in a fight of that magnitude and just coming out and trying to, you know, blast the guy out of there in the first round. He was very out of character. While Cambosa stayed calm, cool, and collective, and he dropped Tio in the first round, cut him badly throughout the fight, and he outboxed him, had a better game plan. He was more focused, and it showed. And you know, with Tio's lack of preparation and focus for this fight, and you mix that, 
with the terrible instructions that he was getting from his father and trainer, Teofimo Lopez Sr. I mean, he was hurt in the corner all over the place. His instructions were all over the place. You know, one minute, you heard him telling Teofimo that the knockdown was a flash knockdown. He didn't really hurt you. This guy is too small. Then he's telling him, you know, take your time, relax, calm down. And then in the next breath, he's telling him what's taking you so long. Hurry up and get this guy out of here. You know, without properly instructing him on what to do or how to do it. You know, essentially it was two against one. You know, credit to Teofimo for never quitting or giving up. He was able to be, you know, very competitive down the stretch. I mean, he even scored a big knockdown in the 10th, you know, dropping Cambosis. But Cambosis was locked in. He was focused the whole fight. And he got up to his feet and he finished the fight on his feet. Finished, finished the 12th round str strong and... He won a much earned split decision victory, and now he's the newly crowned unified lightweight champion at 135. You know, and I think that the, that his performance was, was a beautiful performance. Was, the victory was well earned. The right man won. You know, Teofimo. You know his emotions were you know high at the end of the fight, and he's being a sore loser, saying he didn't win, the, he didn't lose the fight. He won. Everybody knows he won, but. It, Listen to the crowd. The crowd would tell you what they thought about Tia Fimo's comments. I think they think some of them started to boom as well. You know, I think I think him being young and just being a little embarrassed after his first loss, which is why he responded that way. I mean, even though he looked bad in this performance, this is definitely a fight he could come back from. He could learn a lot from it. The kid just only turned 24, so he'll definitely be back. But as a, as a potential fight with Montana Love, I think would be a great comeback fight, but a dangerous fight at the same time. Because, you know, of the skill set of Montana Love and not just the skill set, you know, with Tio coming off his first loss and the way he lost, I don't know if him jumping up that next weight class and fighting somebody like Montana Love would make sense i mean it, you know on paper i mean yeah it's a great fight but it's still a dangerous fight should i say just to come back off of off of your first loss because that's definitely a 50 50 fight in my opinion and it's a it's definitely a fight either fight either either fighter could win you know depending on the night depending on the game plan who, who got the better game plan who execute the game plan better on the night is gonna win I, I, I think highly of Montana love and like I said these last couple performances at 140 really showed us that and he, he, he's a he's a major player at the junior welterweight division and I think there's no denying that so like I said I think this would be a 50-50 fight in all honesty and you know you got Tiafimo re reason I'm even speaking on this fight another reason because you got Tiafimo was on record for saying that he outgrew 135 pounds two years ago so like Eddie Hearn said earlier in the video clip maybe the time to move up to 140 is now because it clearly seems like he he's outgrown the division I mean he's a young kid he, he looks like he he's ready to move out of that 135 pound division he said he outgrew the weight you know he struggled to make the weight so I mean the next best thing to do if you're struggling to make the weight is to move up but if fighting Montana love I think that would be a, a great comeback fight you know it would it would tell Tiafimo himself and the rest of the boxing world where he's exactly where he's at since the Cambos is lost it's a fight I definitely want to see I would pay my money to see it I think it would do well I think it would sell you know Montana Love is making a name for itself over there in Cleveland, Ohio. And, you know, the boxing world pretty much knows Tia Fimo. So I think the fight would sell itself. I think it would do well. And I think as far as entertainment, it would deliver. Because you got two, two, two skilled, two skilled young fighters with speed, power, IQ. And, you know, made the best man win on the night. It's definitely a fight I would want to see, and I just truly hope 2022 we get even more of the fights that we want to see as fans, you know, because, you know, it's that that's what keeps boxing moving, that's what keeps it interesting, the best fight and the best. I always want to see the best fight and the best, and I think Montana Love at just 17-0-1 has shown he, he, he's, he's, he's something, to, something to be reckoned with at 140, man, so I just want to see 
if this is the next potential fight for us hopefully it is that's my thoughts on the matter so y'all get in the comment section like comment subscribe and always get in the comment section man y'all let me know if i gave montana too pretty love and tiffimo lopez jr and just do that's what i like to do over here just do boxing and to the next one i'm out peace